Visual thinking is when you take mental models and start to attach metaphor to it and start to draw things and help people get out of their heads. And then tactile tools are things like blocks and dice and cards and pipe cleaners and, and things for the tactile people who learn and think that way. Making sense? All right. So some resources for that. Game Storming. Everybody heard of that book? It's a great book. The Back of the Napkin by Dan Rome about visual thinking. Thinker Toys is another one. Shameless self-promotion for me, Catalyst Cards. It's a card deck for visual thinking. I'm actually giving one away as a raffle prize today, so go check them out. I can also sell them if you want to talk to me later. Okay. <laughs> so, this is critical. This is really critical. I, I want to spend more time on this. Neutrality and leadership types. As a facilitator, my job is to be all about the process. But if you look at the way people get together, there's three different elements of working together. There's the content that people speak to or speak about. There's the process of the work you actually do. And then there's the outcome that happens after you work together. So let's think about the different kinds of leaders for the, for the work. A presenter, right now I'm presenting. So I am by no means neutral on the content, right? However, there's actually not much process here. I'm just sort of spitting stuff out to you. So I'm neutral about the process, but I'm not neutral about the outcome. If I'm an instructor, I'm certainly not neutral about the content. The process is important. I have to teach you things. But what you do with the material, I have no sway over. So I'm neutral about the outcome. Consultants are pretty much the same thing. The boss is not neutral about anything. It's our business. I have to work on operations, and the outcome is critically important to my company. A facilitator, however, as I'm really facilitating, it's your content, my process, your outcome. The only person in the room who's actually neutral about the content and the outcome is a facilitator, which speaks to this. You can't be a neutral par third party if you're not a neutral third party. So as IA people working with other folks, I'm coming into the room, I know how I want this thing to work, I've done the research, I've got the brilliant ideas, now I'm going to tell you how to think about those so you agree with me. That's my agenda. Is that the right way to do things? Probably not. But because we create, it's very hard for us to be neutral about it. So the hard work of an IA person when facilitating is to maintain a neutral stance so when they call your baby ugly, you say thank you. <laughs> That's really hard to do. All right, last but not least, last resource. You can learn about facilitation through this incredibly wonderful organization called the Southeast Association of Facilitators, seif.org, and my time is up. Thank you very much. All righty. Thank you, Rich. I think I saw a lot of people taking images of that, so that um, is awesome. I'm glad you guys are engaged. And don't forget to tweet today. Uh, and we, will, we are filming, as you know, you can see. We will make this archive available. So some of these talks, if you want to go back and see them in future, you'll be able to do that. So. But you can still take good notes. All righty, so Colleen Jones is up next. She is the CEO of the content strategy firm Content Science, and she's a Star Wars fan. I like that in the intro. Um, she regularly advises organizations on becoming Jedi masters of content. She co-founded Content WRX, a software service that's collected more than 60,000 data sets. Wow, man, okay. And she's got a big background in lots of companies that you know, like IHD, Avery Denton, Airbnb, American Cancer Size, IBM, WebMD, and on and on. So I'm going to turn it over to Colleen. Thank her for coming. I'm so, is my mic on? Oh, there we go. I'm so impressed with the turnout here today. This is just absolutely fantastic and exciting. And it is an exciting time for content. I am not neutral about content. Uh, very, very, not, very much not neutral. Um, so what I wanted to do today is talk a little bit about the opportunities around content. 
uh, information architecture and content go hand in hand in large part. Design, of course, is a big part of that as well. Uh, many of you might uh, wonder why content keeps up messing up your designs, why uh, content creates such chaos. Uh, many of you might even care about content. You're interested in learning more about uh, how to get your clients or your employers to take a more effective approach to, con to content. So we are living in a really interesting era, kind of a crazy uh, interesting time for business uh, that is very much relationship centric. So business today is uh, digital. And business today, uh, more and more, is becoming dependent on things like subscription-based relationships, uh, which of course makes uh, long-term relationships with customers critical to being successful at business. Uh, it is kind of a new thing. And adjusting to that change is challenging for a lot of businesses and organizations. And it's a big reason why more uh, than half of the Fortune 500 have actually disappeared since the year 2000. So there are a lot of implications for this, a lot of implications. And what I want to uh, focus in on today uh, is, is one. So let's take a look at digital disruptors and digital evolvers. Who has managed to win uh, in this crazy time for business? So uh, of course you have the uh, disruptors who started their business really focused on digital, really focused on uh, subscription and transformed industries as a result, as you can see on the top here. And then, of course, you have those who have managed to adapt and thrive because they have changed their approach to business. They've found a way to uh, go digital, to go more subscription. Uh, or they've acquired uh, businesses that were starting to be disruptors and uh, used the, what they had developed and innovated to help them make the transition to digital. Now. You might wonder what this has to do with content. I really see a common thread here, uh, which is the need to do content well in order to do digital business well and to uh, not just survive, but to thrive in digital business. Now, let me share a little bit more about that. If you think about it, uh, customers really expect to have the right content at the right time in their entire relationship with your company or your business. This isn't just about supporting a buy flow or marketing. This is for the entire customer relationship. Uh, everything from technical support to uh, product and solution descriptions and uh, really making sure they're available at the appropriate point in the customer relationship. And even if you're not strictly a uh, business, uh, if you're a nonprofit or a government agency or other type of organizations, you're adopting things like customer service uh, and having this customer-focused approach. And a lot of these same types of content adapted to your particular organization apply. So uh, you might think, well, gosh, does that mean that we need to create lots and lots of content? Uh, you know, this means that we need to have a lot of content available. Is that really the challenge that businesses and organizations are facing? And we have found, uh, and I particularly, oh, that's just a smart person from McKinsey restating the same thing. Uh, we have found that when it comes to uh, the challenges around adapting content for digital business, uh, the challenge isn't really creating content. Uh, businesses uh, are pretty good at creating lots and lots of content, uh, and these are just a few indicators of that. Forrester actually uh, noted that uh, for B2B marketing alone, uh, $10 billion was spent in 2016. And so we have an increasing amount of content 
information, increasing amount of chaos, you might say, from an information architecture standpoint. Uh, and so we have found that the challenge really is more about making content effective. So how do we not just create content, but actually make sure we create the right content and uh, deliver it to the right people in the right way, and do that on an ongoing basis, and do that at scale, you know, as we grow our customers, as we grow the number of people that we're interacting with through digital. So that is a lot of opportunity, uh, a lot of opportunity for you, everyone here today, whether you want to uh, do this kind of work yourself or you interact with people who care about or create or are responsible for content in some way. So I wanted to uh, highlight just three areas where uh, I see the most opportunity and where we need to make a shift from the old way of doing content to a new way. I don't claim to have all the uh, how figured out as far as how we get to where we need to go. Uh, that's why we need smart people like you to uh, really put your brains together and help figure this out. So those three areas. One, content strategy. Now, uh, in the old world, there was not really a content strategy, or there might have been some strategy and planning around a particular campaign or a particular type of communication but not really a, a strategy for the business or organization. And so you experience things like content being created in silos that conflict with each other, uh, having too much content about one topic or one area, and not enough, maybe a complete gap in another area, just a few of those symptoms. In the new world, we really need to uh, think bigger about content, we really need to have integrated a content strategy that uh, really aligns with the customer experience, the customer journey, uh, and also aligns with the goals of the business. And you know, we really can't take advantage of cool stuff like natural language generation and chat bots and all of this cool stuff that we can do now with content if we don't have this kind of foundation uh, in place. So just a few examples of what things need to start looking like in the new world of digital business and content. Another area, content analytics and intelligence. So uh, I'm really surprised at how many companies and organizations I come across today where the people involved in content, the content teams, are uh, really uh, siloed from data uh, and from the kind of intelligence that's going to help them make better decisions about content that can really help their strategy and so on. Still find this even today. And so we really need to move from pulling out some vague vanity metrics about how many page views my awesome content got to really having key performance indicators focused on content needs and goals. And again, that are really supporting the digital business. So uh, a lot of opportunity here. We've done um, a lot of good thinking in this area, but we need more people to help uh, really think about this and bring it up when you see it as a gap. And then finally, just wanted to uh, call out content empowerment. So in the old world, uh, there's a lot of focus on uh, copywriting. Copywriting is critical. Uh, but that's not all that there is to content. And you know, you had situations where anyone who could write a little bit was then you know, given the power to create content. We really need to move to a world where we have centers of content excellence. We have uh, defined roles around content, like content designer, content analyst, content strategist, content engineer, and training to uh, support uh, and empower those roles. So think about that, the new world of digital business and content. I'm going to be around. I'd love to chat with you more about it. And I wanted to share one quick resource. Uh, we have an online magazine called Content Science Review with a lot of free articles and uh, resources there. 
we share our own thought leadership as well as talk with leading organizations around the world about what they're doing in the content space. 